Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm ready to jump into another portion of my luxury lipstick series, and we're talking satin and cream luxury lipsticks today. Now, if you're wondering uh, what I'm considering luxury, anything $35 or more. I feel like that $35 price point is a good place to start, and then things just kind of skyrocket from there. Um, so I realized as I was going through, I will link my entire luxury lipstick playlist in the description box down below because my previous video she got a little long she got a little long and I tried to do it all at once and I'm breaking it up this time so the matte video had like 56 minutes and who's watching an hour worth of lipstick I don't know if you're as obsessed about makeup as I am but it was just so daunting to do I said look, look, okay there's 24 of these let's break it up eight by eight by eight so eight lipsticks today this should be nice and snappy but this will be you know, like part one of three. Keep that in mind. Let me tell you the criteria really quick. I'm looking at what the price is. Is there a scent to any of these lipsticks? What is the packaging like? How many shades are in the range? What does it feel like on the mouth and how long does it wear? And then there's a place where any other extra notes that might be helpful. And this is where I'm gonna put down like experiences that I had. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna do my best to make sure and touch all of those points as we go through. And also keep in mind that as a 49 year old, I'm looking for something really specific in a lipstick. I want it to be comfortable. I want it to be low maintenance. I don't want it to find all of those lines and just whoop, go everywhere. The minute you become a high maintenance lipstick, forget it. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I also want the price to be, okay, luxurious, but approachable. I don't want to be spending oodles and oodles of money if there's not something significantly substantial there. Like, show me the substance. That's what I'm looking for. And I want it to be moisturizing, okay? Uh, I just want the moon. I want it all. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to start with one of the lipsticks, and this I think is kind of like dividing. This is the one I rank the worst. The one that, although I like the idea and have heard so many good things about, I just am not willing to spend another $38 to try another one is this one here from Hourglass. This is the Unlocked Satin Lipstick. So again, $38. There's no scent to this. I like that, and if you're looking at the packaging, it does have this really nice like little bunny with the H. It is a magnetic closure. Oh, but you better be putting it in right, because if you don't put it in right, it, she doesn't close. It only goes in one way, and then it just pulls it right in, which is fine. Um, so I like the magnetic closure, but this is so plasticky and <laughs> lightweight. I was gonna use a different word, but it's very lightweight, but it's $38. There are 21 shades in this range, and I only got one. And I'm so glad I only got one. <laughs> okay, let me put this one on. This one's the shade Dahlia. This is Dahlia. I think this is a really pretty shade. Um, I like the way that it feels on the mouth. It's creamy, it's comfortable. It, it has um, a nice ability to kind of stay but not travel. This lasts for about four hours. I would say most satin and cream lipsticks fall into the category of, because they're a bullet lipstick, um, and they don't have that matte or that um, super long wearing technology in them. They tend to last, you know, like half a day, half a work day. Um, or if you're eating a meal, if it's kind of like a really involved meal, like a sandwich or something, you're going to want to reapply. I feel like this holds up through cups of coffee, through light snacking. But the minute I eat a meal, she's mostly gone. And that's fine. The problem I have with this lipstick and the reason that I do not like this lipstick, and I wasn't willing to spend another $38 on another Hourglass lipstick from the Unlocked line, is because this shade in Dahlia turns my lips hot pink. It's not instant, because I'll take this off, but there will be some pinkness there. The problem I had was as the day went on and I kept applying more over the top, more staining to my lips to the point where it was a fuchsia pink, and there was no amount of this kind of I don't know, kind of slightly uh, corally nude shade could cover it up. This shade was too light to cover up the vibrant, on fire, hot pink that my lips became. And I have never liked pH adjusting products. I'm not saying there's a pH adjuster in here, but there is something in here that turns my lips hot pink. And that's the only thing I can think of. Maybe I'm wrong, but there was no way I was spending another $40 on a lipstick that might do that because I bought this, I think in when they launched in 2022, 
and I, I wore it a handful of times and I haven't touched it since. And it literally sits in my collection for moments like this. Like I should probably declutter it because this is not the lipstick that I've been looking for. Um, I've, and I feel like I probably wouldn't be as upset if this was a darker color, say if it was a brown or say if it was like a brick red and my lips got stained, that color that the lipstick itself is would be dark enough to cover up the pink. I'm not mad at a lipstick that stains. I'm mad at a lipstick that stains to a much more vibrant and darker color than the actual shade that you see in the bullet because there is no amount of this. She turns a different color and then I can't cover. I'm gonna quit talking about it, but do you see the difference between the hot pink and the color of the lipstick itself? This is me blotting the lip, and this hot pink is what turns, I mean, it, it's, it's crazy. So I don't know, and I'm not willing to find out whether it continues to do that in other shades as well. All right, so the, the one that I like the least, and I think this came down to, I wish I had purchased it on the brand's website. I bought it at a department store. And it's this Byredo lipstick. Like, first of all, I really love the component. The component is stellar. This is so heavy and weighty. It's got a beautiful magnetic closure. Oh man, this does everything I want packaging to do for the luxurious experience. This is a $50 lipstick. And I got the shade Amber in Furs. When I was purchasing this lipstick, the lipstick description on the department store website had Byredo lipstick split up into matte and satin. There was the matte formula and the satin formula. And this shade, Amber and Furs, was listed under the satin formula. But if you go to the Byredo website, this lipstick, there are three finishes. There's the satin, there's the matte, and the shimmer. Guess who is a shimmer lipstick? Now, as somebody who was born in the mid 70s, grew up in the 80s, a lot of my strong makeup memories come from, you know, 80s vibes like a high draped blush, really strong Brooke Shields eyebrows, frosted lipstick, and some of them I still love like a bold brow and a, and a bold blush, but me and kind of shimmery frosty lipsticks. Okay, so I kind of feel like this was user error. This was not Byredo doing anything bad. This was, I don't remember if I got it at Bloomingdale's or Neiman Marcus, wherever I purchased this from, this was the department store. <laughs> the luxury department store did not have this properly listed as in the description as to what it was. Because I would, although I like the color of this, I would not have picked up a metallic lipstick. Now, is it the end of the world? No. Here's what I know about this. There's a slightly, slightly sweet scent to this. Um, I like that there are 21 shades of lipstick in this line, but that includes satin, metallic, or shimmer, they're calling it, as well as matte. So all three different types of formulas mean that there are 21 shades that come in this gold and silver packaging. Um, it glides on really nice and it feels good, but in about two hours, I feel like it's gone. The one thing that I will say that is nice about this is although it does have kind of that metallic-y uh, shimmer finish with the pearl suspended in the formula, my lips never feel grainy. They don't feel sandy. Sometimes if there's too much something in there, it can feel a little gritty on the lips. This doesn't, but this is not a particularly moisturizing lipstick. And at $50, man, I want, more. I want moisture. My nearly 50 year old lips, need more moisture than this is giving. I think that the reason I feel like this doesn't last terribly long, I get about two hours of wear out of it, um, and it starts to fade, and it could be because it's it's a lighter shade. This is not like the boldest shade that you can get in the Byredo formula, and I'm wondering if I had like a red or a deep brown or a dark plum, something that was significantly darker than this, it might have more longevity, but I, I don't know that I'm running out to buy another Byredo lipstick. Um, she's so pretty, but the substance on the inside has not pulled me in and said, you needs must have another. The next lipstick I have from you is this one from Clay de Pope. This is their Rouge a Love Satin Lipstick. I have the shade Riveting Red, it's number 19. Um, I'll tell you, at $65, this feels very chintzy. The last time I bought a Clay de Pope lipstick, it came in reusable packaging. 
she is not reusable. And the reusable packaging felt like something I could have gotten at the dollar store. It was not giving luxury. Now, they recently came out with very similar packaging with their new like precious stones or diamond whatever lipsticks. And they're 120 something dollars and I'm sure the packaging is better. But this does not feel any more luxurious than like a high-end lipstick. There is a, a slightly faint ever so slightly faint floral smell to this. I feel like a lot of these high-end luxury lipsticks come with a really <laughs> discernible scent, like, oh, that was an expensive lipstick because it smells like an old lady's perfume. <laughs> this is giving that just a little bit. It's not as bad as some other brands, um, but at $65 with this packaging, it, it does feel like a little bit heavy, but you're getting that mostly from what's in this end because this cap, no. All right, beyond that, 19 shades. I feel they're okay, but they're, they're not really, now remember, I live in the middle of nowhere, so I have to order things like this online. I can't just walk into a store and, and look at the lipsticks themselves, swatch them on the back of my hand. And the truth is, the way that the lipsticks are actually shown, the promo photos, they don't look like they're nuanced shades. They, they look like your basic pink, your basic mauve, your basic red, your nude, a pink leaning nude, a beige leaning nude. They, they, they just aren't exciting. They aren't, and maybe that's what I'm wanting. Now, maybe I'm not the target audience for Clay de Poe. Maybe Clay de Poe is going for somebody who is, you know, a little bit more traditional in their makeup approach. And I'm not saying I'm like groundbreakingly, you know, drawn outside the makeup lines here, because yeah, you know I'm a boring Betty. But I feel like there should be more nuanced shades. There are other brands that have interesting shades or tones or um, something that makes the lipstick different than what you can get someplace else. The other thing I don't like about this, although it is hydrating and it does feel good on the lips, guess what? This is what I call a high maintenance red, which means it finds all of those lines around the edges of my lips and it just, boop, it spreads. And this is one where if I don't wear it with a lip liner, and the older I get, I have to wear most lipsticks with a lip liner. Um, sometimes I'm like, I don't care, and I just do whatever. But then I end up having like little lines spidering out. Man, this is one where I have to babysit it. I have to hold its hand. I want to make sure that it's not getting where it doesn't belong. Um, it is comfortable. I do find that it is nourishing. I feel like it wears about two hours, and then it's like, yeah, goodbye. And I don't know if it's because my lips are dry and it's, you know, late winter and it's just sucking up all the hydration or whether it's just not a very long wearing formula. It's easy to reapply. There's nothing wrong with that. But I find that this does find all my like, little nooks and crannies and just kind of travel. So at $65, the fact that the packaging isn't fantastic, the fact that there aren't really nuanced shades, the fact that it's a high maintenance red, it's not a bad lipstick. It's, it's just not where I'm gonna go back and say, I need another one of these. No, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Those first three lipsticks were the ones that I was like, no, bad. Not for me, not spending any more money on this. We're finally moving into, and, and I'm glad to say that most of these satin and cream lipsticks that I've tried from luxury brands are actually really nice lipsticks. And then it just comes down to small little nuanced things, things that I like a little bit better about this one than the other one. So this is not a bad lipstick um, and I like it, but the reason it is here is, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, it's this one here. This is from La Bouche Rouge. This is their satin formula. You are paying uh, $45 for this little love right here. This is just their refill. The one thing that is nice, hang on a sec. I didn't mention this in the matte formula breakdown, but I should tell you this. So they come in these little paper sleeves and uh, this little paper situation here is not necessarily giving looks, but the one thing that is nice about it is a lot of these lipsticks that come with refillable cases, if you don't have the case, you kind of can't use the lipstick. And I don't like that. But this one here, you can use it in its little refill case and it comes up in. You can roll it up, you can roll it down. So if you are okay with the little, you know, recyclable paper sleeve, it even has the name right here on it. Like this is the shade um, Lador. And it does have information on the bottom about the brand, but you can, this is actually a functional refill container. So you do not have to go out and buy like their um, refills. So the case itself, if you were to get the one that's in leather, it's $80. 
This one here is a vegan leather one. I found it um, at the detox market for $12, which is great because the component itself is really heavy duty. It's nice and magnetic. Um, this like falls in and magnetizes in as well. You can use any of the refills with this. Um, and the other one that I have, I have a little camel like brown one here. This one is leather. This one is vegan. This one was $80. I paid, I think originally it was like $30, but I got it for 12. Like that's how you want to do this. The one thing that's really funny to me is that La Bouche Rouge is always telling you how their formula is vegan and cruelty free and all of that. And yet they sell their lipstick in a refillable leather case. Okay, so I do have one of the vegan ones. So this one here, you know, no animals were harmed in the making of said lipstick. Let me throw this on for you. There is no scent to this lipstick and I, I like that about it. The one thing I will tell you though is I, I find, I don't know if you can see it, that there's always like a little bit right here where it doesn't stick. It is very hydrating, it feels nice, and it stays if I don't smush my lips together, but the more I feel like I smush my lips together to redistribute product, um, it kind of just pushes it from the center all the way to the outside, and I have a little bald spot in the middle. This is not my favorite formula. I do like this shade though, this shade uh, Lador is beautiful. I like this warm red. I like that it's kind of a sheerer red. It doesn't feel heavy. It feels like hardly anything, almost like a nice balm on the lips, but I do have problems like right here in the middle. This is another one that I feel like I need just a little bit of lip liner to kind of contain it. It can sometimes travel a little bit. Um, I feel like the one thing that's, that's interesting about this is that um, the name and if you speak French, make sure that I have this right. Le Bouche Rouge means the red mouth. And so a lot of their lipsticks are reds and you know me, I love a red lip, different shades of red. And then they do have nudes, they do have pinks, but I feel like they really settle into that chic red French lip and they do it so well. I like the different types of red shades that they have, but this is definitely one, the satin formula. If I do not wear this with a lip liner, it does find some of those nooks and crannies. I think that the reason this is not ranking higher is the problem I have with it like right here in the center and the fact that these refillable cases are so expensive and I also think it's funny that they're always talking about how they're you know vegan and cruelty free and clean in their formula but yet they're selling you like little leather cases. To, I'm not a vegan but it is to me kind of like wait what? <laughs> It's kind of funny. This next lipstick is one I'm familiar with and I've had quite a few over the years. This is the Absolute Rouge Cream Lipstick from Lancome. So this has uh, the packaging where you press the gold button on the top, shoots out the bottom. This though, I remember when these used to be metal. This feels so plastic and lightweight. Now it still does have like this little metal detail here at the top and I like the push button. Um, when it's all together, it does have a weightiness to it, but these used to be heavier and these used to be just a little bit more luxe. Um, if you're curious, this is the shade Exotic Orchid. I've always liked Lancome lipsticks for the way that they feel. I like the way that they sit on my lips. I find that this lipstick is a little bit heavier. I, like the one from La Bouche Rouge is a little bit more lightweight, a little bit sheerer. This definitely has some pigment to it. And I find that it kind of grips and it stays on the lips. Is it slightly heavier? Yes, but not in a way where it feels like you've got like this heaviness on your mouth. I just don't have to worry about this. The other thing I like about this, $35. Um, it, it's kind of getting more high end than luxury, but the performance of the product itself, I think is, is actually really beautiful. Um, I don't mind the component. And if you have ever had a Lancome lipstick in the past, this, this smells like all the Lancome lipsticks that I remember from the past, like 35 years. <laughs> yes. This, this reminds me of like going to the Lancome counter and, you know, buying all the different iterations of Lancome lipsticks, like the color design. Um, what was the, the love line where they came in like little silver packaging, um, like all, all the different sorts of things. I've had so many different Lancome lipsticks over the years and they all smell like this, but this is just a solidly good lipstick. I feel like this is great. Now you're getting uh, 22 shades in the cream formula. 
I do like that it does have that uh, really kind of creamy hydrated feel to it. And I feel like this lasts a lot longer than some of the other ones. This one lasts for like up to four and a half to five hours. And it does need touch ups after eating a, a snack. But if I, I can eat a meal and as long as I'm not eating like a burger or, you know, something with an oily salad dressing, I feel like this actually stays really well. It needs minimal touch up. Um, it does get stuck to, you know, straws or glasses or utensils. Um, you will find little traces of it on your napkin as you're blotting your lips while you're eating a meal. But you know what? It doesn't really instantly disappear. Food is not like its nemesis. It kind of stays, hangs tight. I like that. The problem I'm having with this lipstick, the reason I don't have more in this formula is because there aren't as many, like, they, they remind me, I feel like a lot of the shades are the same. Maybe some of the names have changed, but you're still getting kind of like that sugared maple, you know, kind of exotic orchid look. And, and I remember these lipsticks from years ago. I want some new colors. <laughs> and I remember when there used to be a lipstick display that was like, like maybe a hundred lipsticks. They don't have that anymore. And I don't know. It just feels like the number of shade offerings has decreased. That's just me, but solid good lipstick. I really like the formula. The next lipstick is from Estee Lauder and I don't have it in their regular packaging, but I do have one of their um, lipsticks in the holiday packaging. So I, although I like Estee Lauder lipsticks, I haven't bought one of their new pure color cream lipsticks. Um, so I have this right here. Their new packaging is actually uh, refillable, which I like. I think they started doing that like a year and a half ago, making their blushes and their eyeshadows and their lipsticks refillable. Um, this new pure color formula is a new formulation. It's $38 and the refills are 29. And I feel like that's actually really nice, but I can't tell you what the component is like because I don't have one. There is a slightly sweet um, scent to these. I feel like the scent is a little bit less intense than the ones from Lancome, and they're very similar in price. Now, um, this one here is one of the holiday ones, so you'll see it has like some embossing on it. Normally they don't have like shapes on them, they're just kind of like little vertical lines that are very reminiscent, if you've been an Estee Lauder fan for a while, of the old Estee Lauder tubes. Those little gold ones that had like the little ridges on the outside, I love that. But this shade here is actually a shade that they carry uh, right now. This is called Intense Nude. There are 31 shades in this range, and I like that we have some of these shades. I feel like you have your traditional, um, you know, reds and pinks that you normally get from Estee Lauder. Um, some of the shade names are still the same from several years ago, like Rebellious Rose and things like that. But um, I really feel like this formula has changed over the years. Um, and I feel like it's really changed for the better because although it is really hydrating, and it has kind of like that slightly thicker, a little bit heavier feel like Lancome lipsticks do. This one is not as heavily scented. And it, and for me, just kind of ekes out. Like if you're going to go to the department store and you're going to be shopping at one of those major counters, I would say these $35 and $38 lipsticks from these two brands, these are really nice. Um, and I, I think it comes down to finding the shade that you like. I get about five hours of wear out of this, like I do from the Lancome one. It lasts through beverages, it lasts through a meal, it's hydrating. My lips actually aren't like an unhappy disaster at the end of the day. There, there are some products where I put the product on and as the day progresses, my lips dry out. There are some where I put the product on and whatever state, original state my lips were when I put the product on, at the end of the day, when I take the product off, it's maintain that. This is one of those that at the end of the day, my lips are actually better. They're more moisturized. They're more comfortable. Um, this is one of those that is, a, I think, a really high performing lipstick at the price. I don't know that it's quite the same like delivery for packaging when you're thinking about, you know, packaging like this or packaging like this, but it's a great lipstick. I have used this next lipstick so much and it has been one of my favorite purse lipsticks. The ones that I put in my purse and I just leave in there because it works with almost everything. And it's this. This is the Victoria Beckham Posh Lipstick. This is $38. There is no scent to this, but this is the only kind of really bold shade that there is in the line. This is called Pop. 
Um, I do really like the packaging, the slimline packaging, especially for a bold color like this, because it really helps to make sure you're getting it right where you want it. And the older I get and the more volume and collagen I'm losing in my lips, the more I appreciate slimline packaging, you know, with kind of more precise sized lipsticks with bold colors. I love the strong snap closure this has, like you really kind of have to work to get it off, which I love. I like the tortoiseshell aspect of the Victoria Beckham um, packaging and even this little gold VB here on the top. I think that's a nice touch. There's only 13 shades in this line. Um, this is one of those lipsticks, like we're finally at the point now where I'm like, you know what? I would love another one of these. I want one of these in a nude and I want to find the right nude for me from this line because this lipstick wears so well. This looks great straight on from the bullet, like fully applied, like 100% pigment. Um, but it also looks great as it continues to wear down because this does what a lot of other lipsticks don't always do really well, which is to wear off evenly all over, not just right in the middle and you have like a line of lip kind of color around the edge of the lips. This I can wear with a liner or without. Um, this is one of those lipsticks that by the end of the day, my lips are in better condition from having worn this. I kind of treat this like my red, lip balm <laughs> it's not a lip balm but like i really like this lipstick i think this formula is nice i like the precision application of it um i would like some more colors but you know with a smaller brand like victoria beckham um it's one of those things i appreciate that we're not constantly releasing newness 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 it's very specifically thought out carefully curated to the brand to make sure that it stays in line with kind of what their mission is and i i really really like that i like that victoria's brand is very um elegant and luxurious but not too much so the last lipstick for today's video don't worry i've got two more videos like this planned um with the satin and cream formulas is this one right here this is the hermes rouge satin lipstick this beauty here is $75, but she's refillable, which means your refill here is $49. All right, packaging, beautiful. It has uh, the tricolors, the magnetic closure, the gold accent here at the top, the brushed kind of gold at the bottom. It's so, so stunning. And if you're getting some of the limited edition ones, they come with different color packaging, but they'll still be those like tritone situations. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out what the scent is, I can't really put a finger on it, but it's light and it's sweet and it's very unobtrusive and it doesn't linger. So if you're sensitive to scents, I mean, approach with caution, but I kind of have that feeling of you might be okay. Um, this one here is the shade Rouge Piment. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. I may not, I don't speak French, but it, it just, it glides. It's so lovely. There's only 12 shades in this lipstick. Now that does not count the matte formula. That doesn't count the limited edition shades because I know they have, like they have balms, they have other things, but in this satin formula, there's only 12 permanent shades. I wish there were a few more. Um, I really love this kind of slightly cooler red. It's much cooler than the Victoria Beckham. She's so pretty. This has a, a beautiful, a very luxurious mouthfeel. This is one of those where it feels creamy and, and I like this best when I pair it with the lip liner, but I don't absolutely have to, which means it doesn't find all the nooks and crannies. It's not one of those that just kind of whoop and slides everywhere. Like the one from Clay de Poe, mm, she travels. <laughs> she travels and she doesn't always tell you where she's going or how long she's gonna be gone. <laughs> this one though, I really, really like this. This is the type of lipstick that, yes, it is expensive. Yes, she is bougie, but I feel like it delivers the, the weight, the experience, um, the, the beautiful packaging. I like that it's refillable. Um, and then on top of that, my lips at the end of the day um, are at the same state, if not just a little bit better. I don't think this is as hydrating as some of the other formulas that I've been talking about. I feel like the Estee Lauder and uh, the Lancome and the Victoria Beckham actually impart moisture to my lips, but this lasts on the lips for like a long time. I would say I get about four and a half hours of wear out of this. Super easy to reapply over itself if you need to touch it up. Um, but because it is such a bright, bold red, this is one where if I'm doing a sandwich or a burger or, or a pizza or something that's gonna, you know, greasy and go everywhere, I just wipe it off. <laughs> 
I wipe it off because I don't want to have like my lip roll down as I'm taking a bite out of a big giant burger and end up with red down here. Um, and that's just because these satin formulas, they're very creamy. Um, they, they will go places if you're not careful. I tend to be a very careful eater. I don't tend to lick my lips, but remember it's a bullet lipstick in a satin formula but this is beautiful like this is the sort of thing that makes me go hmm Hermes what else should I try like this is like we're finally getting into the place where it's like I want more this is great that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Remember, I still will do two more of these videos. Um, I'll do the ones that are kind of like right smack dab in the middle, and then I'll do like my fadey faves, um, but I'll break it up into eight lipsticks per video. That just makes it a little bit more manageable for me. Most of these lipsticks I actually really like and I enjoy wearing. The first three, these guys right here, the Byredo, the Hourglass, and the Clay de Peau are the ones where I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't need any more. <laughs> Um, and that, you know, sometimes it makes me sad to say that, especially when I've spent $65 or $50 on a lipstick. I want to love it. I want to buy it and I want to fall head over heels for it. Um, but I also have to remind myself that I can't force myself to love something that I don't like. Because like this guy here from Hourglass, like, no, this was not it. And every single time I kept trying to wear it and make it work and it didn't work and it didn't work and it didn't work, it just made me mad. And I should have at that moment taken it back, but we're way past that point now. That's the one thing I wanna remind you. If you get one of these really expensive lipsticks and it doesn't work for you, most places will let you make the return, even if you've used it. You can do that at Sephora, you can do that at Ulta, you can do that at most department stores, um, and even most online retailers have a return policy. Not all of them will take it back, but so many of them will here in the US. It's not worth hanging on to a bougie lipstick that you're never going to wear. Every time you look at it, it just makes you sad and go, waste of money. Don't do it. All right, hey, don't forget to check the description box down below for my luxury lipstick playlist that has try-ons of all the newer things I've been purchasing as well as my almost hour-long uh, breakdown uh, from worst to first of the matte lipsticks. Um, I will continue uh, putting out videos about luxury lipsticks. Um, this one I'm glad it's so much more manageable. <laughs> <laughs> at not being an hour long, but there we go. If you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comment section. I'm always happy to answer any questions you have or tell me what your favorite luxury lipstick is. Do you, do you have one or you're like, I'm never spending that much on a lipstick? Um, let's talk about it. Thanks so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I will see you again soon.